Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to take a look at a dexterity game uh, that is being sent out, uh, at least it came to me from Z-Man Games, uh, but it has several names on it. We have Forge Next on the back here. We have Pretzel Games, which I believe is the actual designing company, uh, now part of the uh, Philosophia group. Uh, but, you know, there's a collaboration going on here to bring this game to you. Uh, but this is a dexterity game in which each player controls a team of cowboys. Could be outlaws and... Uh, and sheriffs, and I think it oftentimes is, but you could look at it any way you wanted, right? It's just two groups of cowboys in the Wild West looking to shoot each other down or steal some gold or kidnap a sheriff's daughter or poison some water. Uh, so real quick, we'll open this up. We'll take a look at what you get inside. We'll see how you play the game, and we'll come back at the end, and we'll get my opinions on Flick 'Em Up. So here you can see the components and setup for the first scenario of Flick 'em Up, where we have the outlaws outside of town here who are coming in to kill the lawmen who are set up over here. And you can tell these are outlaws because they're the black guys and they make them bad for some reason. Uh, and the good guys are in the white here. So just classic good versus evil, black versus white, you get the idea. Each cowboy has a hat on and you can see his hat is this little circular cardboard disc uh, that can be flipped over. And when it's flipped over, you flip it over when he's done taking an action to show the next color, which will be blue in this case. And you alternate blue and red turns, indicated by this clock here that starts on the six, which is a red turn, then moves to blue, then red, and alternating back and forth. Each player, in this case, controls five guys. And each of these guys is going to get a turn to do something, starting with the outlaw team, which has the initiative. On your turn, you're going to be trying to move and shoot your opponent's guys. So really, you're trying to kill the white guys in this case, and the white guys are trying to kill the outlaws. When you move, you're going to be flicking a disc to do so. So this is a movement disc. You would choose one of your guys to go first. It does not matter which one you would like to go first. So we could choose number three here if we would like. Uh, we would replace him with the disc. Uh, and if we would like to move, we would flick this disc, not using our thumb. So you don't get to use your thumb for extra force. So if you wanted to go pretty far, you'd need to hit it relatively hard. Uh, when you're done moving, you would simply place your guy there, uh, and that would be done. And this is one of two actions you get with that guy. Your second action could be to move again. If you don't like where you ended up, you could simply pick him up again and flick more in order to get closer. But now he's a sitting duck because he's taken his two actions and his turn is done. So you probably wouldn't want to get this close. Alternatively, let's say you moved out into the open here, and now you wanted to shoot your gun. That is one of the other actions you can take. And after you're done moving, you can orient yourself any way you would like in order to either be a minimalized target for your opponent, or if you like this way, it's a little bit easier to get a shot off because you can place your gun or your bullet disc up to one disc away from yourself. So something like this. When you shoot, you again must flick without using your thumb. So we could do it like this. And I hit this guy back here. However, he did not fall over, so I only grazed him and he is okay. Your goal is to knock them over, and if you do so, you will deal a damage to them. You can see out here that number three has three hearts on him, so if we were to deal a damage, we would take this token, put it in our own little container over here, our headquarters, and that would indicate that we have done a damage to that guy. It simply hides the token from play. Um, if you were ever to kill a guy by dealing a third damage to him, you'll actually take his hat and place it back onto the board because you have to skip a turn each time it comes to that guy's turn to act, even though he's already dead. So as you die, you actually have to continue taking turns with that guy, even though he can't do anything. So the first type of action you can take is move. The second type of action you can take is to go ahead and shoot. And again, you can do any of these actions multiple times, but you get two actions total. The third type of action you can do, and it's not available in this particular scenario, but you can enter a building and exchange, drop, uh, or pick things up. In order to enter a building, let's say you flicked here, you need to pass the threshold of the door, which is these little standy blocks that are holding this actual cardboard piece up. And when you do so, you go inside of that building. In certain scenarios, there may be objects inside of that building. In other scenarios, you can actually be followed in by another player, and there can be a duel that happens, where each guy gets to shoot back and forth and advance upon one another until one of the two guys is dead. Uh, so basically a quick shootout inside of a building and the game ends, or that, at least that duel ends. 
So your goal in this one is to activate your guy, move forward, shoot your opponents, and then once you're done with that, your opponent will take a turn with one of his men, and back and forth. There are some rules about movement. For example, if you hit a block on your movement, that doesn't count. Uh, you're not allowed to hit a block. That is an unsuccessful movement. You move back to where you started, and if you would like, you can move again with your second action. So all of these blocks, or any of these cacti, are off limits, as are the beams and the areas of the, the buildings that are standing here. So you can't hit any of them. Um, for bullets, knocking over things, if you shoot them, they move, uh, and you can only hit one guy with your bullets. So you can't get multiple people off of a ricochet. Anybody who's hit second is fine and safe and all good. So once you're done, you'll flip your hat over. Your opponents will take their turn, moving, shooting, entering building, and picking things up, uh, and they will then activate one of their hats. Any guy that is knocked over, let's say that this guy got shot before it was his turn and he was laying down. He will stay on the ground until you activate this guy, and he cannot be injured while he's on the ground. So he's actually safe until he stands up. This is true for bullets. This is true for dynamite, which can come into games into the game later. It's a little red hexagon that uh, does damage equal to an area of the movement disc and actually removes items from play when it goes off. Uh, he simply can't be injured while he's on the ground. But once you activate number three or number one here, he will stand back up and he becomes a target again. So you might want to wait until all of your opponents have gone. You'll go back and forth taking your actions until everybody's taken all of their actions, at which point you will go ahead and advance this one mark, and whoever has the initiative marker will start the next round. In this case, it is the outlaws. Now, if the outlaw holding the initiative token, in this case number one, is ever killed, whoever kills him, whoever fired that bullet, will take the initiative marker and initiative will move to the other team. So you can take multiple turns in a row. There are some additional items, and of course there are many, many scenarios you can play in this game. So there's scenarios where you're trying to keep gold if you're the outlaws. There's scenarios where you're trying to poison barrels. There's scenarios where you get a rifle that you can shoot. Um, that rifle uh, is like a little, little um, I don't know where I set it right now, but it's a little wedge-shaped thing that lets you guide the bullet and you flick it from that so you actually can shoot pretty straight with it. Uh, there are some where you'll get dynamite. There are some where you're trying to rescue the sheriff's daughter. Uh, so there are all types of different things you can get. And there are little gold bags and extra guns you can get that allow you to shoot two bullets. Um, there's some rope you can get to bind somebody up to make them, you know, kind of a prisoner. And of course, there's the dynamite you can pick up. And each of your guys can hold a certain number of things based on their inventory. When they die, as I said, you'll take them off and a little gravestone appears on their their headquarters here. This will go away, but their hat, if number five were to die, will get placed on the board and will have to flip over to take its turn just like normal, like any of your other guys. And of course, your meeple comes off of the board. So basically, depending on the scenario, the setup will change, uh, the goal will change, the rules will change, and you have to best move and maneuver and flick and hopefully be accurate with your guys in order to beat your opponent. And the other player, uh, whoever accomplishes their goal best by the end of the day, which in this case is midnight, or eliminates their other team in this scenario, will be the winner. And there you have it. That is Flick Em Up from Pretzel Games. Now this game, first thing we have to talk about right off the bat, the production quality is possibly the best production quality in a game that I can remember seeing. Especially just, it's not a deluxe edition. It's not, you know, the unusual copy that they send to reviewers sometimes. This is the actual component quality for the game. So you have a cardboard container, and inside of that cardboard container you have a wooden box, and all of the components are either very thick cardboard or very nice wooden components. So kudos to them for some excellent production quality. Even the rule book is like a thick bound book almost. It's not hardcover, but uh, it's still a very nice book. The gameplay is what you would expect, right? It's a flicking game with some pretty cool rules. Uh, you're shooting down cowboys. The theme lends loads to it because, you know, if we were just flicking discs around. Interesting, I love Crokinole, my favorite game of all time, but having cowboys in here does help the theme. Uh, overall, the gameplay is pretty easy to remember. You flick a disc to, to move, you flick a disc to shoot, and your goal is to knock over the other cowboys. The rule book is well laid out and tells you how to do things, what you're doing, uh, and overall it's just really a straightforward, nicely themed, excellent component dexterity games. So if you don't have a lot of dexterity games in your collection, if you don't own a crokinole board, or you're simply looking with something for something with awesome components, a cool variable setup, and variable scenarios already made for you, I would definitely suggest checking this one out. It has a lot of the classic dexterity flicking game components uh, in a really cool package. Uh, so if that sounds good to you, check them out. That's Flick'em Up.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>